start off, we'll quickly do the sequence of slides, which is um, a day in the life of the average working Australian. So waking up at 6 o'clock in the morning, or well, maybe not, but <laughs> going, going for a jog, getting in a car, driving to work, working hard, staring out the window wondering about when you're going to be leaving, um, getting back in the car, going home for dinner. So then as an alternative scenario, which could be a more contemporary approach towards living, is um, waking up in the morning, going for a jog, walking to the tram stop, uh, bumping into a friend uh, along the way, having a quick chat about what you've been up to, jumping on the tram with a hundred other people, um, people watching, getting off the tram to work, working hard. <laughs> at, at six o'clock, uh, darting off to the local pub for a drink just around the corner with friends, uh, maybe some dinner, and then tram ride home. So in comparing these two scenarios, what's uh, very important here is that um, the, what is missing from scenario one is the interaction or the incidental interaction with people um, over the course of your daily life. So what has been a key factor in that is been um, the key moment in history when um, the commercial car industry took off and public transport was basically shelved. Uh, in the 30s and 40s, capital cities all over the world were forced to make their public transport systems redundant and um, the key moment of incidental social interaction was lost. So, today I'd really like to talk about the uh, concept of the third place. It's, uh, it's uh, an idea that was uh, originally written, uh, by, um, or written about by Raymond Oldenburg, an American <coughs> sociologist who um, appreciated or uh, understood that the, the, the daily uh, working life was uh, operated between home and work and shuttling between the two, but that key moment of incidental social interaction along the way had been forgotten. So, um, and also, importantly, where unrelated people would um, relax. <laughs> and in understanding that, it's um, very important to then think about uh, examples in our Australian uh, society. So. The beach is very much the, uh, the third place in Australian culture, and obviously um, our place of worship, the football. So to now look at a few other examples of um, countries and cities that are, and communities from uh, other parts of the world um, that of interest Germany. Um, it is obviously not Australia. It's got a population of 82 million people. It's um, extremely densely packed. It's got only three centres over a million people, um, Berlin with three and a half but it's got 96 communities with over 100,000 people in it. And each of those communities are very well articulated um, and with consolidated density and then um, opportunities for the natural environment and agriculture. And a very good public transport that links those communities as well. Um, Berlin, which um, has obviously been through uh, World War, um, it's uh, fallen communism and uh, the war, and now it's become a destination, or it's become the cultural destination for um, for youth almost in the world. Um, it. Oh, moving on. Um, the um, Detroit is a very interesting example as well. It's inversely, uh, it's actually got some similar, so um, I suppose, uh, characteristics as as Adelaide. It doesn't have a growing population. Um, it has, since the car industry um, diminished, uh, it has become a vacant city with a huge amount of 30,000 uh, hectares of vacant land throughout the city centre. Um, and a way that the, uh, the city has chosen to reinvent itself is with an initiative called Green in Detroit, which has uh, allowed for 900 urban farms that have facilitated community interaction um, throughout the city centre. Now going back to Australia, looking at Collingwood, um, Collingwood is, I suppose, now the cultural capital of Australia. It's um, historically, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> Maybe you probably won't like the next slide then, but <laughs> it, um, it has a very strong tradition of uh, working class culture and um, very much built around its football team, um, but through the um, industrial and um, well, industrial parameters as well, facilitated an opportunity for young people 
to move in um, to the neighbourhood in very affordable circumstances and a, and a creative class has been born um, out of Collingwood. Uh, Collingwood now has a population um, with uh, average age of 32, which is five years below um, the, uh, the nation and seven years below Adelaide as an example. So looking at a, um, another interesting example is the Edinburgh Gardens in North Victoria. Um, it's three kilometres from the CBD. Uh, it's flanked by medium density inner city um, suburbs of Melbourne, um, but it is Melbourne's beach. And, um, it is a destination where young people go to, um, old people go to, families go to, punks, skaters, um, people of all walks of life go there to interact and it is uh, Melbourne's third place. So, looking at Adelaide, the city of the future, um, it is very ripe circumstances for uh, a very progressive future. It is, um, it has got a modest population, but it's got a slow growing population, which some people may see as a negative, but it's a very good opportunity for change. Um, it has a amazing tradition of uh, the community through being known as city of churches and also through events. Uh, it understands um, what a what a community is about. So um, it is essential that in South Australia for a way forward to be the city of the future, it is a progressive state. It's a city that embraces um, forward way of thinking and new technology and new ways of thinking. And most importantly, is open to the change and embracing that. So some key ideas about future of Adelaide and becoming the city of the future is um, the idea of urban consolidation. Um, defining a boundary to the city and um, activating um, or embracing a metropolitan uh, culture within those urban areas and then inversely having uh, defined green and agriculture and natural environment zones. Um, embrace being metropolitan. Uh, embrace the idea of diversity, cultural diversity, and um, the idea of uh, all, all walks of life and all uses being integrated. Um, evaluate every, uh, each person's own way of uh, living and operating. Um, right? Um, and importantly, activate um, our arterials through um, Again, consolidation of use, don't be afraid to mix building uses and programmatic uses and also um, yeah, living and commercial uses. Introduce green pockets and again, embrace the idea of co-locating. Um, reinvent what is potentially seen as an a, as a, a new or something that is uh, not of value. So look at ideas like laneways and other opportunities. Move away from the traditional model of the uh, quarter acre block and look at the idea of community living. So uh, instead of having a quarter, acre, a quarter acre block with a three bedroom house in it, embrace the idea of consolidated medium density living and in turn have a larger community and public space which allows people to uh, interact incidentally and most importantly, celebrate the third place. So in establishing all those parameters, what is most important is that there is a, a culture and a youth culture that is established here in South Australia for a, a, a city of the future and also a natural evolution. So it's essential that we co-locate young people within the city centre um, and provide opportunity or incentive for them to foster a natural um, culture and evolution within the city. Embracing new ideas such as coexisting and um, in, in a commercial and also in a residential sense as well. And as Adelaide does very well, celebrate the event. And most importantly, live. But in saying that it is essential that um, for all of these parameters to happen, uh, the, uh, it's very important that the government steer the city in the right direction to ensure that the, uh, the right decisions are made, but also that um, 
there's an attitude towards change um, to see or to see a forward thinking city evolve. <coughs> okay, thank you.